Yeah, I got it. Yep. G'day and welcome to my channel. Not a lot has happened to the gasifier over the past month or so, so I think it's time to get my finger out and get cracking. So first up I'm going to fabricate the gas outlet. I'm going to fabricate that out of sheet metal and uh, Bolted to the end of the gas outlet will be the cyclone separator. Apart from that, there's uh, various bits and pieces of plumbing, and with a bit of luck, um, I might even make a start on the floor. We'll wait and see. But anyway, back to the gas outlet. Its uh, shape and dimensions are rather important. I'll show you why. So what we're looking at here is the basic formula for a cyclone separator. Basically, all the dimensions are a factor of D, D which is the diameter of the cyclone body. So what you see up here on the plain view, that will be uh, the gas outlet from the gasifier leading into the cyclone separator. Um, what you're seeing here is a transition from a round section to a rectangular section. I'm not going to do that. I feel it'll be just a little bit too fiddly and a little bit too time consuming. So I'm just going to keep my ductwork rectangular from the gasifier all the way over to the cyclone separator. And uh, because of that, the shape and the dimensions of the gas outlet is determined by this formula that you see here. And we wind the stops up. There we go. Oh, it just needs a tad little bit more. Okay, let's give that a go. That's pretty good. So now with the stops set, doing the next bend is a piece of cake. You just keep them going down till it hits the stops and that's it, we are good. That's it. Easy as that. So I've just marked out where the flanges are going. So I'm just going to be using a bit of a 32 by 5 flat bar for the flanges.
I'm getting ready to tack weld the other flange on. I fabricated this in a single piece rather than two separate pieces and that's just so I, um, I can be sure that the two separate pieces will align perfectly. Um, you'll notice that I put some flat washers in between the two flanges and that's just to allow a gap for the hacksaw blade. So once this is tack welded on I'll get rid of the uh, screws and then uh, yeah I'll basically cut the thing in half. So this thing here, that's the thermocouple for the reduction zone. Um, the way I've got it shown here, which is the original plan, uh, I've got it coming in through the outer body and then through the side of the grate. Um, I had a bit of a thing about it, I had a bit of a look at it, and it's dawned on me that um, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to be getting the temperature at the bottom of the reduction zone by the time the uh, charcoals make it into the grate and up to here, they will have cooled uh, substantially. Um, what I really need, um, I need to know what the temperature at the bottom of the reduction tube is. So what I've ended up doing, um, I'm just going to use one of these um, black steel BSP sockets. So I'm just going to move it up slightly, just to up here, angle it downwards, and this way the uh, slightly longer thermocouple it's just going to miss the uh, grate, and with the grate being fixed, um, it's never going to touch it or clash. And then drill a hole through the bottom of the reduction tube, and that way I'll be reading the temperature exactly where I want it. I won't fully weld it until the fire tube is in and I know that the thermocouple lines up with the reduction tube. Moving on to the ignition port, what we've got here is a length of pipe which originally was going to be welded to the uh, outer body and uh, it's connected to the fire tube via a barrel unit. Then I thought it would be quite nice if I had some adjustability here or if I could remove this pipe from the gasifier, um, just in case, I don't know, if I was to maybe fabricate a different fire tube, maybe one for wood pellets down the line, whatever. So I thought it would be nice if I could simply bolt this pipe to the vessel. And I thought, well, probably the best way to do that would be uh, via some sort of a flange system setup or something like that. That's it.
We're through. Oh, man. Glad I won't have to do too many of these. Here's a bit of pipe and flange to which the ignition port will be bolted to. Uh, currently it's just tacked in place. It'll be uh, fully welded once the fire tube is in and it's all connected. So here's the plumbing bits that makes up the ignition port. It's all inch and a half. This end here gets welded to the fire tube. Um, what we have here is a stainless steel toe nipple, galve barrel union, and a bit of the galve BSP threaded pipe. And at the end here, a stainless steel cap. All right, so what the idea here is, the ignition port and pokes through here. Once I've worked out exactly where it goes, once it's lined up with a fire tube, I'll then weld this bit of flange to the fire tube fire tube, ignition port, and the cap goes on like so, and if ever I have to take this thing out, whatever, it's just a matter of unbolting this flange, and the whole lot comes out, just like that, easy peasy. Just going to make up some stiffening bars for the floor just to make it a little bit more rigid because uh, it is only 2 mil sheet steel. I'll be using the same method that I used on the hatch doors so I'm just going to slot these on the bandsaw. Truth. Beautiful.
So the floor's coming along quite good. The stiffening bars have been welded to the floor. I just chamfered the ends here, so I think that's turned out quite well. In the middle here, I welded in a bit of 40 by 5 flat bar. That's just so there's a bit more metal there when I press in the bushing for the agitator shaft. The hole you see here, that is for biochar collection. There'll be a set of scrapers inside the vessel, uh, which as they rotate, they will push the biochar out towards the, the sides and uh, it will drop down through this hole. Just bear in mind, um, this whole thing is upside down at the moment. So all that's left to do really, um, I made up this bit of flange and square ducting for the biochar collection. So all, I, all that's left to do is I've just got to weld this in situ. Oh yeah, the force in place. I gave it a coat of paint, some of this flame-proof paint. Um, over the biochar port, I've just uh, put this temporary blanking plate. Um, that's because the uh, biochar collection chamber will probably be one of the last things that I build. Uh, because it, it's not really uh, critical to the operation of the gasifier, it's more of a, a nice thing to have. Let's get this thing back in the frame. Whew. Man, this is getting heavy. Tell you what, it's quite a change having a flaw in the gasifier, and uh, man, it is. It is solid as. So, yeah, it's. Uh, beginning to look like something now. So yeah, so there's your biochar collection port there. Thermocouple port, thermocouple for the reduction zone. Gas outlet and ignition port. Maintenance or access hatch there. So the piece is back in the frame. Um, it's actually beginning to look like something that could pass for a gasifier, uh, especially now with the floor in and the various ports or plumbing in place. Next I'll probably start on the lid and um, I'm really looking forward to that because once the lid has been built that means I can make a start on the fire tube and uh, the fire tube really is the heart of the gasifier so uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, things will really begin to take shape then. Well, yeah, well, I guess uh, that's probably not a, a bad spot to wrap this up. So, um, yeah, cheers. Thanks for watching.